okay, so today we're gonna continue uh, working on Alivets, right? So which is the uh, the library that we studied some time ago, which is a very simple graphics library that renders everything into the memory, right? It doesn't really have any third-party dependencies, it doesn't really uh, try to do anything fancy. You give it uh, a region of memory and it just renders everything into that region of memory, right? So um, recently we started go into 3D, right? So essentially here is a very th a simple 3D application, right? So we basically generate a bunch of 3D points in 3D space, right? We uh, project them onto the screen and we render circles on the place of their projection, right? So we don't do anything particularly special, but I want to slowly move towards like a solid objects in 3D. And the way they're usually implemented is by uh, generating a mesh of triangles, right? And then just filling in those triangles uh, with, with pixels, right? Just filling in those triangles. We already know how to fill in triangles, right? So we even have an example to do that. So I think it's called triangle SDL. As you can see, we can render a triangle, right? And uh, since 3D graphics, right, is all about rendering triangles, one of the things that we need to uh, be able to do is a triangle interpolation, right? So we need to be able to do a triangle interpolation. So let's actually define what is a triangle interpolation. Um, so maybe the, the triangle interpolation makes sense in like in comparison with just linear interpolation, right? With a linear interpolation, usually, right, you have two points, maybe in 2D space, maybe in 1D space. Usually it's 1D space, right? So it's, it's a single line. Uh, right, so you have a value A and you have a value B, right, and then um, essentially depending on uh, how close a certain point is to A and B, the value of that value of that T is basically closer to A or closer to B. Right, you can imagine that maybe color A, like maybe point A is some sort of a color red, right, and B is some sort of a color green. Right, and the closer T to B, the more green it is. So the closer it is to A, the more red it is. And this way you can sort of interpolate like a gradient, a color gradient. So this is a linear interpolation. You do that on a single line. Triangle interpolation, I, and I'm not even sure if that's like an official term. I'm not a mathematician. I'm not a programmer. I'm not a graphics engineer. I'm not aware of any of these fancy terms. I just do things that work. Right, so my only criteria of uh, things is that if my ideas work, they are correct. I usually don't look at what kind of terms do I use. Do I use the right sequence of characters that is traditionally used in that media? I usually cannot remember that, so I'm really sorry. I don't know if that's an actual term. So forgive me if it's not, but I like to call this um, triangle interpolation. So in a triangle interpolation, in instead of like two points, as you can see here, uh, you're going to have three of them, right? So we're going to have A, B, and C. And we can associate some sort of a value with these three points, right? Maybe it's going to be uh, red, green, and blue. Red, uh, green, and blue. Right. And this entire thing forms a triangle. And then uh, you have a point on that specific triangle. So, in essentially what you need to figure out, you need to figure out uh, how close this point is to each of these points. And you need to mix those values, mix those colors according to the proportions of how close they are. Right. So, this is what I would call uh, triangle interpolation. Right. And usually this end up being um, expressed in terms of uh, three values, right? And these three values, let's actually denote them as U1, uh, U2, and U3, right? The interesting thing about these uh, values is uh, that the sum of these values must be equal to 1, right? So these are proportions. These are proportions of these values, these colors. I make an accent on these things being values because they are not, maybe not only be colors, right? So they're not necessarily have to be colors. Uh, they can be any value because you can uh, interpolate uh, any value, just like with linear interpolation. You can interpolate positions, you can interpolate maybe time or anything, whatever you want. Um, right, uh, so, and essentially, um, 
Yeah, so you need to find these three values. As far as I know, uh, you can uh, refer to these sort of like three values as barycentric coordinates. Uh, barycentric and barycentric. Uh, so it's a barycentric coordinates. If you if you want to learn more about these kind of things, you can Google them up. What's interesting is that. Um, how come you have three values in here, but in a linear interpolation you usually have one value? In reality, if you take a look at a linear interpolation, right, if you implement LERP, right, if you imp implement LERP and you have A, uh, B, and then you have T, right, which, is, which has a value from 0 to 1, uh, you usually implement this kind of stuff as A multiplied by T plus uh, b multiplied by 1 minus t, right? So, in fact, with linear interpolation, you have two values. It's just like you need to know only one to express it properly, because the, you, you can say that this is uh, u1 and this is u2, and their sum is u1 plus uh, u2 is equal to 1, right? So, but uh, since they have this sort of like expression, uh, right, you need, to, you need to know uh, only one because you can then find the other one by subtracting it from one, right? So here you have two. And in um, triangle interpolation, you have three, right? So, and again, in fact, you don't even need the third one uh, because the third one can be quite easily um, expressed uh, like this. Right. So you can say that, in, in fact, barycentric coordinates consist of two values, because the third one is sort of like implicit, if, if you know what I mean. Right. Uh, but the question is, like, if you have this kind of stuff, right, if you have these three points, how can you find this barycentric coordinates so you can mix the values accordingly? Right. There are, there are different ways to do that. Uh, I think the easiest way to do that is to actually solve the system of equations. So let me actually see my team. And we're going to try to solve the system of equations. The system of equations is actually rather simple, right? It's going to consist of two variables uh, because we already got rid of one of them, right? So we don't need the third one. And uh, yeah, you just solve the system of equation and you instantly get that formula. Um, all right, let's give it a try. Um, I'm not going to do that manually on uh, using the tablet because I, I just found that using math with like with pen and paper in 2022 is rather slow. Have you noticed that? Because you have to like literally draw each individual character. You can't copy paste sub expressions. You can't easily quickly search for things. And like doing math with pen and paper in 2022, in 2022 is painfully slow. Like I tried to get into doing math with pen and paper because I heard from like uh, very cool mathematicians that that's the right way to do math. But I just can't do that. It's so painful. Right, it's just like, I feel like I'm being concerned with the things that has almost nothing to do with math. Right, so I'm trying to, um, you know, write everything properly because if I do like a very long reasoning and my stuff is unreadable, I'll go back to that stuff, I won't be able to recall it, right, and then on top of that, I have a limited space, so I have to like do a space management for some reason, and none of these things had nothing to do with the problem that I'm trying to solve. Like, yeah, like why can't I just use computer that uses a proper phone so I never have to worry of like whether the thing that I put down on the paper is readable or not, so when I go back to it, I can read it back. Like, why do I have to be concerned with all that? And maybe it's just like me being whiny little shit. <laughs> like, I, I don't know, maybe like I, I just have to have like a proper education or something like that, but I just like can't find the appeal. And I genuinely tried to get into the proper math with pen and paper, but it just like feels like programming with pen and paper. Like why? So I, I don't understand that. I'm, I'm sorry. Like, maybe that's why I'm not a mathematician. Right. So that's why I'm going to do all of the all of my mathematical reasoning in a text file on a computer in 2022. OK, so we have a computers that, that do all of that for us. Uh, Barry, Barry centric. And I'm going to put TXT in here. So what do we what do we know about Barry centric coordinates? 
Um, have you tried Mathematica or something similar? I tried to develop my own thing, which is called Knock. Right? Have you seen Have you seen me developing Knock? Uh, so this is basically a simple expression transformer that is not cock, and cock is uh, proof assistant. Right? So you can you can check it out in here. Uh, but I'm not sure if I'm going to be using Knock, uh, right? Because I need to do a system of equation, but Knock right now doesn't really work. Uh, with system of equations, so I'm probably not gonna do that. So I kind of postponed the development of Nock. I will go back to it at some point. So anyway, uh, right. So what do we know about uh, barycentric coordinates? Um, right. So it's a u1, u2, u3. We know that their sum is equal to one. Right. And on top of that, we have three points. We have v1 Zulu. Uh, which is a vector, right? So it consists of two points, x1 and uh, y2, right? So then we have something like this, and uh, then we have something like this. How am I supposed to do this kind of speed on a paper? Like, if I had to do this kind of shit on a paper, like, I would, it would take ages. Like, come on. Uh, anyway, so xp, yp, right? So th this is basically the point uh, inside of the triangle uh, for which we are trying to find the barycentric coordinates, for, for which we try to find the interpolator. Another interesting property of uh, this thing is that if you take the components of the... Um, the x components of the vectors, and you do a dot product with uh, Borisandian coordinates, like so, right? So if you mix in the the components, the x component, uh, according to these proportions, you will get uh, basically the x component of the point inside of the triangle. So this is another th important thing that we have to keep in mind. And the same thing goes for uh, y components. And this forms a system of equation that we have to solve. So, and um, one of the things we can do, right? We can try to solve the system of equation, um, but we have to solve system of equation with three variables. And as already said, we don't really need the third variable. So we can simplify the whole thing, right? So we can say that y3 is equal to this. Which means now we can take uh, u3, right? And replace it with this specific value. So u3, replace it like that, and there we go. So the next thing we, we can do, we can actually redistribute these two things, uh, like so. So we're going to be redistributing them like that. And let's group uh, some things back again, for instance, by U, uh, U1. So as you can see, we have the second group of UI in here. We can actually move it in here. Uh, like so, right? So they are grouped in a single place. And in terms of U2, uh, we can regroup them uh, like so, right? So we have U1 and here we have U2. So, and to make it like more or less like symmetric, we can actually move this part to here, right? And this one's gonna be actually minus. And let's actually group everything back into parentheses and stuff. Um, so if we do that, can I just do it like that? I think I, can, I should be able to do it like this. Uh, so this is gonna be U2, and I can remove U2 from here. And there you go. So we've got a simpler system of equation, which we can express in a matrix form, right? So essentially, you can express this entire system as multiplication of two matrices. So this first matrix, let's actually call it something like uh, T, right? And it's gonna be a matrix of two by two. And it essentially consists of these differences, right? As you can see, we have like four differences in here. Uh, so the difference between x1 and x3, x2, x3, and so on and so forth. And you can turn these differences into a separate matrix, right? So something like this. Mm -hmm. 
and then you can put it like that. So this is the first matrix. Uh, then we need to define a matrix of the variables that we're trying to find. So as you can see, we have only two variables in here, and uh, this is a matrix of two by one, right? So let's actually call it two by one, and this is U1 and U2. And if you take these two matrices, right? So two by two, T multiplied by U, uh, you would get a matrix of the results which is basically a vector of these two values, right? So we can actually put this thing in here. So matrix two by one, uh, like so. There you go. So maybe I'm going to even move this entire thing down there. So this is basically a compressed form of this system of equations, right? So, and if you remember how you multiply matrices together, it actually does make sense, right? So, uh, do you guys remember how to do that? Um, I can actually try to do that. So, let me show you. So, this time it's actually a little bit easier to uh, draw it. So, let's imagine that we have a matrix T, right? And it's a matrix of two by two, right? So, this is a two by two. Uh, let me find it in here. So it's two by two and we have a matrix U, uh, which is two by one, right? And essentially we are constructing a new matrix two by two by doing a dot product between this vector and this vector, and then doing another dot product between this vector and this vector again, right? So essentially, um, you have two matrices, right? Two by two and two by one, right? And the matrices are uh, multiplicable. Is that how we say that? If their inner sizes are the same, right? So we have two by two and two by one, and these things are the same. And that's why you can build this, uh, you know, cross structure to actually cross do dot products between, the, uh, between their corresponding columns and uh, rows and columns, right? So this is more of a, like a visual thing, right? So the thing about matrices is that they're very much visual process, right? So, but, but this is one way to interpret it. As far as I know, there's like a multiple ways to interpret it, but this is the way that I use, right? If I can build this structure and just like, you know, uh, do a Cartesian product of dot products, so to speak, that means that there I can multiply the matrices. So, and this is effectively what we're doing in here. And as a result, we're going to get, get this matrix. So to solve this uh, equation, we have to move this thing to the right side, right? Because we are trying to find use. So to do that, we need to multiply both of the sides with an inverted matrix, right? So we're going to have U inverted matrix T multiplied by R, right? So that's what we, we need to find. So, but the question is, what is an inverted matrix? Luckily, uh, the matrix that we're trying to invert is actually two by two and finding the inverted matrix of two by two is rather trivial. We can Google it up, right? So inverted matrix two by two, because I can never remember. It, it involves some like determinant and stuff like that, uh, but they can, oh, there you go. So there is like a straight up formula, which please show me already. Uh, yeah, there we go. Can we just open it somewhere here? Just, just give me an image. Why is it so modern internet? I hate modern internet. Okay, so this is the only thing that we care about. So essentially, an inverse of the matrix is uh, a joint matrix A, which is essentially you have to swap this diagonal and negate this diagonal. Don't ask me why. Right. So the thing about linear algebra in matrices is that at glance, they look like pointless rules that you have to remember, which is kind of annoying. And this shit annoys the heck out of me. Right. So and especially in universities, <clears throat> when you start to study, the way they give you the matrices, OK, here are the rules. Memorize them, bitch. It's literally, this is literally how linear algebra is taught in, in universities and it just pisses me off. Like, why do I have to like memorize the stupid fucking rules? Um, and the, the question is, how can you even invent those rules? Right. So f for me, matrices feels like a framework that is basically developed by somebody, but nobody remembers how this framework works. It's just like using React 
without like never looking into the source code of React and nobody knows how it works like inside of it. Like who came up with this thing? Why exactly these rules? Like how is that justified? Like how? Like what's the method of coming up with such rules? You know what I mean? It's just like it's so weird it, and it's never taught. It's never taught. And matrices are always giving you as black boxes. Just memorize those rules and never ask questions. And it's so, so weird to me. Like, it's just, like, why? Mm -hmm. Anyways. Uh, okay, let's go ahead and just, like, you know, take this black box and just feed the data into that black box and hope that on the other end it will give us something... Uh, something that we want, right? So um, essentially, we can clearly see that uh, the inverted matrix is a joint matrix divided by the uh, the matrix determinant, right? So let's actually try to compute the determinant first, right? Uh, we can clearly see that determinant is basically AD minus BC. So you take the uh, product of the main diagonal, right, and then subtract the product of the secondary diagonal, right. So uh, maybe I'm going to actually bring some of the stuff in here. Um, you know what? I'm going to split my screen. On the right side, I'm going to keep the matrix definitions. And on the left side, I'm going to do this kind of stuff. So that means here I have to take this thing and right, this thing then this thing, uh, and then this thing. There we go. Uh, so this is determinant, right? So we identify determinant. A joint matrix, right? So let's actually copy paste this thing. And what we're we doing here, we have to swap the main diagonal, right? So that means we have to take this thing and put it in here. We have to take this thing and put it in here. We swap the main diagonal. The secondary diagonal, we have to negate it, right? So B stays on its place and C stays on its place, but we have to negate it. Uh, so we have to put minus in here. But what's interesting is that by putting minus in here, we just swap this, uh, this, uh, those operands, right? So we can do uh, here uh, as well. There you go. We found the determinant and we, have, we found the uh, adjoint matrix. I hope I pronounced that correctly. So the inverted matrix is essentially this thing, uh, this thing, and each of the elements divided by the determinant, right? So we have to divide all of them by determinant, which is gonna take too much space. So you know what? I'm not gonna substitute it with the actual value of the determinant. I'm gonna say, okay, divided by that T. I'm gonna keep it as the single thing just to keep things a little bit more compressed, right? Even though I'm not doing that on a pen and paper, I still have to manage this space for some reason. I don't know why, right? I don't really know why I have to manage space. <laughs> it's nothing to do with math, but maybe maybe the, it has to do something with math, right? Maybe managing the space, managing the memory is also part of the mathematics. Who knows? Who knows? All right. So, and to find the actual solution, we need to take this matrix and multiply it by R, right? So, let's put it in here. Uh, and since multiplication is very much like, you know, dot products, as I already demonstrated, so that's precisely what we have to do. So we have to take this vector, so this is going to be matrix 2 by 1, like so. We take uh, this vector and we sum its component, but we have to multiply each of the components with this thing like so, and with the second thing. There you go. So what's interesting in here is that we can actually move this multiplication to here, like so. Right, so we move it in here and the value is not going to change. And now we have this thing which we can move uh, outside of the like parentheses. So to speak, I'm sorry, I'm using like a Russian terminology like for, for math, but I'm not sure if it's correct or not. Right, so this is the first thing. So the second thing, uh, we need to repeat it one more time, but for this vector, like so. And I can even copy paste this stuff from here already, right? So it doesn't really have to be like that. Uh, 
Uh -huh. Like so. And again, we can do a similar thing where we just move this stuff to the right and put it into like this, basically regroup it. And there you go. So effectively, what we have in here is that U1 is equal to this, right? And we can right away replace the determinant with its actual value in here, just to see how it goes. I can't see shit in this miss. Okay, so this is the first one. And the second one, U2, is effectively uh -huh, this thing. And U3, of course, we already know what U3 is equal to. It's one minus blah, blah, blah. Right, there you go. Uh, so this is basically the formula for, the, um, for finding the barycentric coordinates based on four points, right? The uh, vertices of the triangle and the point inside of the triangle. So one, uh, when you have these things, you can find the proportions, like the, you know, the triangle interpolation using this formula. Pretty big formula, isn't it? But I mean, it's not that scary if you know that this thing is a single determinant thing, right? So you can always keep it in a separate variable, like so, uh, and just like put it like this. There you go. So this is a whole thing. And what's funny is that you can already take this stuff and put it into C code. Right, you already have a, a C code that you can use in your program. Right, so essentially you can do something like int, maybe void barycentric, uh, barycentric, and here you're gonna have x1, y1, and you're gonna have three points. Uh, right, so here we're gonna have x2, y2, x3, y3, and then xp, yp, right. Uh, and then you want to return u1 and u2, right? So it's going to be u1, uh, u2, but it probably has to be a float, right? So it has to be float, u2, u2, and u3. So let me actually align these things appropriately, maybe put this stuff like that. So this one is going to be integer, maybe I'm going to make it float. Uh, and this entire stuff, since it's output parameters, we have to make them like this. There you go. So that's another advantage of doing math in a text file, because you can take the results of your reasoning and turn it into code to execute on the computer. Can your pen and paper do that? Like, holy shit, like a simple text file is so much superior, like without any special program. I'm not taking, taking, talking about any special program like uh, Wolfram or anything like that, just a plain text file is so much superior to pen and paper that I can quickly copy paste and transform expressions manually and then take the results of my reasoning and turn them into code executable on a computer without any special programs, just a plain text file. So again, maybe as somebody said in the chat, this is a skill issue but I still don't understand the math on with pen and paper. I just still don't understand it. When this thing is so much freaking superior, please somebody tell me. It's just like, okay, it doesn't use the conventional, um, you know, the mathematical conventions that established over the hundreds and thousands of years by like, you know, very respected mathematicians. But that only means that your conventions are shit. Excuse me, sorry. <laughs> Right. I know this is not how you usually denote the matrix, but I mean, it works in a text file. I'm sorry, I'm joking. I, I'm half joking, of course. What I want to say is that it's just like I'm bad at math. Okay, so I'm just like, keep excusing myself. <laughs> this is how being bad at math looks like. Right. If you ever wanted to see what, what it being bad at math looks like, this is this is basically me, right? So <laughs> it is what it is, and it isn't what it isn't. Right. Here's an interesting thing. Um, I'm have an interesting idea is to um, keep away all of the floating point computations from my library as much as possible, right? Which doesn't really make much sense. Like, why would you avoid floating point computations? But what I want to come up with, I want to come up with a library that 
can work literally like anywhere. And you know what's funny? I've encountered environments where floating points are not available. Some time ago, I was working on a on a driver for a gamepad for a bootloader called Grab. Some of you may remember that. And the thing about this bootloader is that it actually loads up in the mode where the floating point math on CPU is disabled. So you couldn't use floating point math. And that was extremely frustrating because I was, uh, you know, writing a driver for the gamepad. And I needed to find a direction for, for the stick, right? And I, I needed some sine and cosine and stuff like that. And I couldn't do floating point math and I didn't have a math library and stuff like that. And I just couldn't do that because I only had integers. And I'm thinking, if I want to do graphics in such environment, I better have a library that just doesn't use any floating points as well, right? And because of that, that brings up a very interesting issue. How can I do the triangle interpolation, the triangle interpolation without floating points? Have you thought about that? Because like literally by definition, Barysantian coordinates are three values from zero to one. They're floating points, right? You're absolutely right. I said that in school in 1981, and now my kids are using editor in math in school in Sweden. Oh, okay. That's very interesting. Hmm. So, yeah, I think text editor is actually really good for mathematical reasoning. The only downside is that it doesn't support the established mathematical convention. Like, how do you draw an integral sign in here? But the thing about uh, the established mathematical convention is that they're very much two-dimensional. Have you noticed that? Mathematical notation, yeah, I forgot the word. Mathematical notation is very much two-dimensional. But here you have pretty much a single dimension, almost. Like you kind of do have second dimension, but overall you have a linear dimension from left to right, right? So, but majority of the um, notions in math that are described in two dimensions, they can be described in one dimensions using functions and parameters of functions. Like it doesn't have to be two dimensional. Like, and I don't quite understand why it is two dimensional. Like for instance, um, I have two by two matrix, but I described it as a function, as rather a functor of four parameters, but I just formatted it so it looks two by two. And it works. It conveys the idea. It doesn't have to be two-dimensional drawing. It could be just a linear sequence of characters. It's fine, right? You can clearly see that it's two-dimensional just from the parameters of this functor. You can clearly see that. And what, you know what's interesting about this thing? You can formalize this syntax. You can formalize the syntax and then write a program that automatically processes, uh, processes this thing for whatever reason, for whatever purpose, I mean. So, I don't know. Maybe there's something wrong with me, but it's just like, I see only benefits of doing math like that. Uh, for pen and paper, it's easier for things like integral and derivation notion because it uses some cool line drawing. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> Uh, right, but for the integral, what is an integral, in integral or integral? What's that? It's a functor that accepts several parameters, the, the variable by which you integrating things, the, the boundaries, like the, the low and upper bound, and the expression. Like, I mean, what's the problem of just writing it down like that? It's just a function with four parameters, I don't understand. <laughs> Like, why does it have to be two-dimensional and cool-looking with, like, you know, squiggles and stuff? Why is it this? Am I missing something? Like, what's the point of two dimensions? Excuse me. <laughs> I just don't understand. Again, maybe I'm dumb. I don't have a mathematical uh, education. Uh, but all of that just looks like a gatekeeping to me. Um, anyway. I'm sorry. Okay. So, I was talking about getting rid of the floating point, right? So, here is an interesting thing. All of this stuff is integer. All of this stuff is integer up until the point when we div divide by the, de by the determinant. Have you noticed that thing? 
So, and here is an interesting thing. Usually, how do you interpolate? How do you usually interpolate value A? You have two values, x1 and x2, which when divided like this, form a value uh, from 0 to 1. Right, and then you, uh, you can sort of uh, interpolate by that value. What's interesting is that if all of these, if both of these things are integers, you can reorganize this stuff like that and actually interpolate by that value completely in integers. Because the first thing you do, you multiply a by um, the upper part of the fraction. I forgot the upper part. Uh, parts uh, of fraction denominator is something something numerator okay so essentially you multiply a by numerator and only then divide this product by the denominator de denominator right so that means if you know both numerator numerator and denominator you don't really need to do any floating point right which means that what if we do the following thing? What if we craft the following interface? We're going to return integers like this, and we also return the determinant, like so. And we do not div divide by the determinant. Furthermore, we know that u3 is basically this. We can just like get rid of that completely and let the user of this function to you know figure out u3 themselves. Right. And essentially, in here, uh, what you can do, you have, for instance, uh, like a caller, right, that you want to interpolate. And then you put a triangle into Beresendic coordinates, like so. Then you put the point, and you're getting back these Beresendic coordinates. coordinates. Right, and if you want to interpolate color by u1, what you do, you just do color multiplied by u1, and only then yourself divide by the determinant. So that way, we still can do triangle interpolation, but completely in integers, because we are exposing that determinant to the user. Isn't that cool? So, and all of that done completely in integers. So that means that means theoretically it will work in environments where there is no floating point. I, I know it's kind of pointless to like you know um, specifically design for such environments. Like it's kind of stupid. But if it doesn't cost anything to add support for that, why not? Because designing an interface like this doesn't really cost anything. Like it just doesn't put too much. Uh, you know, maintenance cost. Like, it's just like, yeah, you just add additional parameter. Does, does that make sense, by the way? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, let's actually try to put that into the... into our library, right? So to speak. And what's interesting is that uh, you need to be able to do U3, right? To find U3, you have to do 1 minus u1 divided by determinant and uh, minus y2 divided by det determinant. So, but this thing is already divided by the determinant. So that means we need to multiply it by the determinant, right? Which will effectively turn this into that. Oh, okay. So, oh, all right, that's actually pretty cool. Um, effectively, right, if you have u1 and u2 not divisible by determinant, u3 can be computed by determinant minus u1 minus u2. Oh, th that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense, actually. Um, passing around precise fractions instead of float, uh, flow, float floats. Yeah. Um, maybe what I'm effectively doing, I'm actually passing around ratios yeah i think i'm passing around ratios effectively so there is this trick uh when people develop such type as ratio right and they have a numerator and um, denominator i can never remember the name i'm sorry 
and they just define like different operators like operator plus uh, ratio a ratio b right and then they basically you know convert them to the same denominator right so they do the uh, you know the sum and then return a new ratio and stuff like that so this is effectively what we're doing that way you can do like fractions without losing any precision because you're using like a, a ratios of things so yeah this is basically like fractions it's kind of like that but without the specific structure right so yeah that's pretty cool i think i think it is actually in fact cool um yeah Alrighty, so let me copy paste this entire thing into the into the library right and i want to apply that in uh, all of its triangle. So what I'm going to try to do, I'm going to try to interpolate the triangle by the colors using this specific formula. Uh, right, so what I have to put in here, I have to put this thing. And do I need to do anything else? I don't think so. Let's actually try to compile this entire stuff and see if it even compiles, right? If whatever we came up with even compilable, who knows? Maybe it's not. Uh, there we go. It is in fact compilable. Oh, by the way, have you noticed how quickly it builds so many things, even though I'm using Clank? Just look at that speed. Well, it's, it's still a little bit slow, but it's, it's actually much faster than it was in the previous stream. So, the thing I found, uh, I found a very interesting mechanism of bash. So, essentially, with ampersand, I can run this thing in the background, right? So, essentially, I'm starting three separate threads. And then I found that in bash, there is a very interesting command called wait. And wait blocks the execution of the script until all of the jobs are finished. So that way I can organize barriers. So effectively here, I'm starting three threads and I'm building uh, three examples in three separate threads and I'm putting a barrier and I'm waiting until they're done. So, and as you can see here, I can uh, basically build three tools in separate threads and I then wait until they're all done and then I can start using these tools in the in the consequent buildings and all of that in bash like I didn't, it's, it's kind of pointless but I just found it cool so <laughs> so I didn't have to use that like make does all of that for you automatically but I just like to try different things in different projects just to see how they work and how they fit for different for different goals and wait is a built-in command uh, for bash so doing man is not going to help you much so you have to do help wait right so because it's a building command so wait for job uh, completion and return exit status and uh, you can actually specify the id of the current job if you didn't specify the idea as far as i can understand it just waits for all of the jobs right uh Vieira lucas thank you so much for the for the subs thank you everyone who subbed i hope i didn't miss anyone so all of that compiles so olivet uh there we go and what i need to, i wanted to do i wanted to implement the olivet's triangle version that accepts not a single color but actually three colors right for each uh for each vertex right so that's what i wanted to say for each vertex so let's actually put that in here and uh, let me put it like that right so the first thing we do uh with olivet's triangle is that we sort the vertices by by y because we're rendering with a scan line that moves top to bottom uh right and since we're swapping the vertices we also need to swap the the colors right so let's actually quickly do it like this square replace yc uh, and in here, maybe I have to do it like that. Query replace Y. I don't have to do that. And query replace that. that. Eh. Oh, well, it's already done. Ah, I'm gonna need it. Uh, query replace YC. There we go. So everything is sorted accordingly. Now, what I need to do uh, somewhere in here, right? So here we are iterating each and individual pixel of the um of the triangle right so there you go uh we know that the triangle is this so we're passing the triangle in here uh xp and yp are just x and y right 
So that's the current things. And this thing should return us u1, uh, u2, and the determinant. Right, so we can pass it like that. Uh, there you go. And uh, now we just need to mix three colors according to their proportions. Right, so that's what we need to do. So I suppose we need to come up with the function that can do that for us, right? So mix um, colors three, uh, right? So in here, we're gonna specify C1, C2, and C3. And I suppose I'll need to pass all of that as a fraction as, as well, right? So U1, U2, determinant minus U1 minus U2, and then the determinant by which we're gonna be actually dividing all of that. All right. Imagine subbing in 2022 exactly when you can just convince Zosin to give you VIP. <laughs> ah. Infiltrating the community is actually way more effective than giving money because you don't have to give money. Anyway, but thank you for, for all of the subs. Like, even though I didn't get any money, but still thank you. Uh, all right, so what we need to do, we need to mix a three colors. We need to mix three colors. So this entire thing is gonna be, is gonna return the color, the mixed color. Uh-huh, you int 32. So these are the colors. Um, okay. And we're gonna have the, let's call it T1, T2, uh, T3. And this one is going to be called denominator, right? So this is this is denominator. You still not getting the money, right? No, I'm not getting any money. I still sub because I like to watch votes without being interrupted uh, every five minutes by ads. Well, I, I hope, I'm really glad that at least it provides some value, right? We sub just because of the ads. <laughs> But I mean, like Twitch accumulates this money. Maybe at some point I'll be able to get them. Or maybe not. Who knows? So we'll see. We'll see. Maybe not. Maybe we just turn into North Korea and it's gonna be like that for 70 years. And yeah, this is the money that will never... But it doesn't matter because there are things that are more important than money. For example, barycentric coordinates. They're going to be the same regardless of like whether you have money or not. Uh, they work this way for anyone, for poor, for rich, for healthy, for sick, for, for anyone. Regardless of your gender, sex, religion, uh, regardless of your passport, it doesn't matter. These things are internal. These things are more important than money. So, yeah. And that's why I'm doing it. <laughs> anyway, so let's continue. Uh, we need to destructurize these colors, right? So, because we need to actually mix their components, not the colors themselves. Very centric. Very centric? No. This is not the correct. This is Boris centric quote. <laughs> Um, is it affected by relativity? I didn't think so. Right. So if you take a look at this definition, uh, this definition is not affected by anything. It's just a relationship of three variables. It exists outside of space and time. It's just there. It's like a number pi. It just exists. We only sort of outlined it, but it just exists. You, you can't get away from that relationship. Right. <clears throat> anyway, so let's continue. Uh, 32. So we need to have R1, Olivet, Red, C1. Uh, then this is going to be G, which is green. All right. Oh, here's an interesting thing. So I have a duplicate uh, line functionality on my Emacs. When I press it like that, it just duplicate, duplicates the current line. Um, but here's the problem with it, that functionality. It actually does not preserve the cursor, right? So as you can see, when I stand in here, I duplicate the line, 
it goes to the end of the line, which is not particularly convenient because when I duplicate, I, I kind of want to stay on the same place where I was. And the reason why it acts like that is because I implemented it myself. <laughs> Emacs by default does not have a duplicate line functionality. Can, can you even do that, by the way? It does have by default duplicate line, but Emacs doesn't have that. So, and uh, I implemented myself. I did a shadow job, but recently I fixed it. So I would like to actually fetch the latest changes regarding the, uh, you know, duplicate line stuff. Uh, but I forgot where is the, uh, where is my stuff? So dot files. Um, so let me see what do we have in here. So there's a zig mode. Let me get rid of that. I don't think we need that. So there's some Jai mode, some VimRC, so Fuzzle mode. Okay, so let's actually fetch the other stuff. I don't know, I have some changes in here that I have not committed and I'm not sure if they're compatible with what I'm about to merge. I think they're compatible. Yeah, make uh, duplicate line retain the columns. Right, so let me quickly restart my Emacs. Oh, by the way, I think in even in Vim, it's not a thing. Right, so for instance, if I do something like that and I, okay, I stay here because I want to duplicate line and then quickly do DW and uh, lib, right? Okay, I do YY, P, and it went to the beginning of the line. Now I have to search for IO and do STDD. Seriously? Disgusting. Anyway, so in Emacs now, with my new modified duplicate line, look what you can do. STDIOH. Look at that. This is so satisfying. Can you even do that? I don't fucking think so. Holy, look at, look how satisfying that is. <clears throat> anyway. Uh, duplicating line is not duplicating its pasting yeah you know what's funny is that in emacs i implemented it in terms of pasting but since i have a turing complete language um, i just remember the the column and i moved there right so that's the way i implemented it actually uh so duplicate line so this is how i did that uh, so here I compute the line, uh, compute the column, the current column, and I remember it. Then I extract the current line. I have to do some transformations because it contains new lines, so you have to cut it off for whatever reason. It's just kind of stupid. And the way I do that, I move to the end of the line, I insert a new line, and then I insert the line that I just saved. After that, I move to the beginning of the line, and I forward the character to the column, that I saved as well. So this is how I implemented it. <laughs> right? So I literally just like sort of copy paste it uh, and then move it to the correct column that I remember. So that's how I did that. Uh, but anyway, so the real power Vmax. I mean, this kind of functionality has to be out of the box. I have no idea why the fuck do I have to implement it myself. Excuse me, if Emacs was a good editor, I wouldn't have to do that. Um, oh, and it also does not end up, in, end up in a clipboard because I don't use clipboard. I fixed that as well. Thank you for reminding me. Yes, uh, I do not pollute the clipboard as well, which is also cool because I'm using variables as an intermediate storage, not the clipboard. Uh, so, okay, what I was doing... I don't remember. Yeah, I was mixing up colors. Um, uh, that's super annoying when YYP in Vim. Yeah, but I think in, in Vim you have several clipboards, right? You have several buffers. You can effectively do that in a... You can basically like mentally allocate a separate buffer for this kind of stuff, if you know what I mean. So it's kind of... You can work around that. You can, you can kind of work around it. Uh, Boris centric coordinates. All right, so let's see. <clears throat> so mix colors three. Uh, okay, so we have B, and this is blue, and this is A, and this is alpha. There we go. So, but we have um, 
three cores. So what we have to do is just like replace one with two and then in here replace one with three. There we go. So we sort of destructurize three cores in here. What I'm thinking, what I'm thinking now is that uh, to mix three cores now, I have to do R1 probably multiplied by T1 plus R2 multiplied by T2 plus R3 multiplied by T3 and then divide all of that by the denominator. And I think that's going to be right because you end up with all of these members of the polynom being divided properly. Yeah, I think I think that's the thing we want to have in here. So that should be correct. Uh, so maybe we're going to have a little bit of the overflow, but who cares? So it's going to be R1. Actually, uh, it's a result R, right? So let's actually call it result R. Uh, mm, it's called R4, right? And the reason why I want to do that is because I can then uh, put it like this, boom, uh, query replace R with G, query replace G with B, query replace B with A. And then I can make, mix everything back. Only well, that's RGBA, R4, G4, B4, A4, there we go. So we mixed three separate colors with the given proportions and the proportions are given in integers because we pass the denominator 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 as a separate argument denominator purple burglar alarm purple okay in the scottish so uh now that should be fine okay so that means i can just like, put this thing in here and uh, unit 32 color all right so but we only do that for the upper triangle right we do that for the upper triangle we have to do that for the bottom triangle because the way we render the triangles we actually split them in two and we just like render them separately so this is the upper one and let's put that for the bottom one okay mm, all right so how should I call this function, right? It's a triangle berry. Yeah, there we go. So let's see if this entire thing even still compilable, because I don't know. Oh, it's not compilable, of course, because this has to be three, not C2. Uh, okay, go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, go. So let's take our usual example the triangle example triangle sdl and turn it into rainbow triangle right so essentially we're going to provide three colors red green and blue for three separate vertices and this function is supposed to interpolate these colors according to uh, the buggy's centric coordinates right according to them all right so let's go to the examples and 3d.c no not 3d triangle uh let me find olivet triangle so that's the first color right so the second color is going to be green and another one is gonna be blue berry there we go so you know what i'm thinking what if i want to interpolate something else how am I supposed to do that, <laughs> right? Is there any better way to interpolate it? Like, uh, so I have to create a version of the function for each individual thing I want to interpolate. And I'm not even sure if that's that much of a good idea. So I don't know. We'll see, we'll see. Uh, so let me uh, build this entire stuff. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And now I'm going to run build uh, triangle SDL. It kind of worked, but not for all of them. Sometimes it disappears. But that's kind of interesting. Hmm. That is very cool. 
why the fuck is this doing like that? <laughs> right. So maybe because at some point denominator is like equal to zero. A blinky triangle, yeah. yeah, yeah. So let me let me see where is my file? What the hell is going on, beat? What the hell is going on? Mm-hmm. Well, the only explanation that I can have is at some point this thing. Well, it's probably overflows. Does it overflow? Uh, let's actually replace this entire stuff with something like int 64t, just in case, just to see if it may be the case or not. Uh, all right, so because I don't think so. That, that's my first hypothesis on what's going on. Maybe it just overflows. Um, right, and if it overflows, I, I don't really know what it does. And let's try the triangle. Okay, that's the downside of doing everything in integers. Yeah. You're risking to overflow a little bit. All right, just a tiny bit. So you can work in an environment without floats, but you risk to overflow. So, and this is something that you have to sort of like decide on, the, like kind of a trade-off. Uh, and I'll have to think about that. Maybe, yeah, maybe not like using floats at all costs is like too much. Uh, maybe it's too dogmatic, right? So maybe we should use floats because floats are like, uh, specifically, I triple zero seven five four floats are so omnipresent in twenty twenty two. There's like pretty much any hardware these days just support them, like one way or another. So I don't think it makes sense to to do it like that. And yeah. Or another thing is that uh, we can basically use sixty four bit integers everywhere. But again, if you want to work everywhere and you're using 64-bit integers are you going to be able to work on 32-bit platforms so that raises the question right so like i will you be able to do that i don't know uh, another solution could be is that uh in the places where we want to use floats we can use fractions right so and also do all of the computations with fractions so to minimize the, to, to minimize the overflow if you know what i mean right so there is a lot of things to, to think about in here right so there's a lot, of, a lot of things to think about in here but yeah that was rather interesting so let's actually do maybe committee committee um you know what i think i'm gonna call this triangle three Similar, similarly, similarly to how I call this mix color three, right? This one is the triangle three, right? So I specify the colors. All right. Uh, so uh, let me just commit, let me build everything. Yeah. Build this edge. Okay, so we have this kind of stuff. Let's put three in here. Mm -hmm. Oh no, it actually broke my formatting a little bit. Mm -hmm. Do I want to keep this thing? This is sort of like a proof. Uh, not really proof, but this is how we came up with this formula. Is it is it useful for anyone? I don't know. I'm not gonna keep it. Maybe we can turn it into a uh, later, later uh, document of some sort. That would be interesting. Some sort of like a you know white paper that demonstrates how to how to do this kind of stuff. And by the way, with later you you can use all of these fancy mathematical notations, can't you? I think you can. So, um, very centric tech, right? How do you even do that? Document class article, right? Um, then, yeah, could not find it. You have to do begin uh, document 
and then you yeah you, you can close it like that hello world right so let's actually try to do that um very centric i haven't used later for quite some time already so i don't really know uh okay so here is the the stuff right okay so it's it's too bright so here is the hello world so we've got the pdf with the hello world right. and what we can do is begin i think it's equation if i remember right if you remember correctly it's equation and in here I can, where is the bird sending to XT? I can say, okay, so bird sending coordinates is U1, but since I'm using later, I should be able to do this kind of stuff. U1, uh, U2, and U3. So as you can see, Emacs already kind of tries to, uh, you know, <laughs> render later a little bit uh, by doing like a subscript uh, of some sort, which is kind of funny, I think. And there we go. So here they are. Can I make them a little bit bigger? So yeah, there we go. So that's that's one thing. Um, looks good, probably. Uh, so if you want to have an expression in here, like one plus one, I think you put curly braces. Yeah, yeah. And it just like does it. It it doesn't really render it properly. It just like sort of like, you know, outlines how roughly it would look like. If it's a subscript, it would it will just make it smaller and lower it down. But it's not like a proper rendering anyway. It's just like. You know hinting to to how it's gonna look like uh right that's pretty cool so the the pdf viewer i'm using right now is called mu pdf and it allows you to refresh the pdf by just pressing r and the cool thing is that it doesn't mess up the uh the position of the view and the zoom right so that way i can just like experiment around with this thing and just refresh and it's pretty interactive sort of speak and i'm not using any special I'm sorry that I hit mic. Any special support for later, right? It's just Emacs, a text editor. I can use any text editor and the separate viewer that just refreshes every time I update the syntax. Right, so nothing special, just, just same. So very centric. And um, I don't know how to get a new line. I think, oh yeah, yeah. So you, you put new line like this, which means I can put this stuff in here. Uh, all right. So can I now do the following thing and say use subscripts for all of these things? Can I do that? Is that a thing we are allowed to do? Okay, so it doesn't support new lines. I don't remember. LaTeX equation new line. How do you use new line? Okay, so you know what I like about later is that uh, like any problem you have, you can put that problem in Google and you quite often can find a solution that you can just simply copy paste and it will work. Uh, AMS, oh yeah, I remember that. So if you want to do like work with math, you better use this package because it has like a lot of additional math related things. N not AWS, but a AMS, right? It has nothing to do with, um, with Amazon. Uh, you have to use a line uh a line i remember yeah i remember a line i i used to use later a lot in the, in the past and it kind of like brings back a lot of memories i think you have to use a line in here uh right so and yeah it, it works with a line it's rather interesting you can specify how exactly you can align things with the ampersand so basically by which symbol it will be aligned um right but yeah, as you can see, we don't really have anything in here. So, uh, yeah, so it's it's more or less aligned properly now. Isn't that cool? <laughs> I think it's pretty cool. <laughs> Why am I having fun with this thing? I don't know. So, system, I don't know how to specify the system equation equations. So, uh, the relationship. Um, uh, okay, so the barycentric coordinates can be defined in terms of the following relationships, right? And this is where uh, we can put uh, a line, right? And we can put this thing in here, but I don't remember how you do 
um, system of equations. How do you do that? It's a very good question. Uh, so maybe I'm going to do it like that. So this is that. Maybe I should have actually done that in later. That's rather interesting. Yo! Well, it would be nice to maybe align that somehow, like this. Look at that shit. Oh, uh, yeah, and it's better not to have any asterisks, because they don't really make any sense. Let's just remove them. Uh, look at that. C dot, maybe we can put C dot in there. I'm not a really back, big fan of C dot, but we can put it. Like, especially when you're talking about like members of the polynomial or something like that. Uh, C dot, C dot. Uh, yeah. Eh. I don't know. I, I like them grouped together. At least in Russia, when we're talking about like polynomials, we don't really put any multiplication between the the variables and stuff like that. We just keep them like glued together. So how do you do the uh, system of equations? Uh, Later system of equations. I don't remember. So math mode system of equations. Uh, all right, cases. Okay. Let's just use cases. Sure. I wonder if we can do something like. Eh, I can't do that. So it's going to be begin cases, and I can close this entire thing like so. Uh, this is not what I wanted. Thank you so much. I wanted to just recompile my PDF. Doesn't that look like a system of equation? I think it does. That's a pretty good system of equation. Not gonna lie. Um, all right. So the next thing we want to do. Um, oh, let's reduce the amount of variables in these in these equations. Right. So, and we can do that by just basically expressing u three in terms of u one and u two. Really, sixteen months. I was absent for. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much for tier one subscription for sixteen months of tier one subscription. Even though I don't get any money, I still appreciate the intent. Uh, so. Yeah, maybe one day I will get this money. But we'll see. Your line P equal... Uh, yeah, probably. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Mm -hmm. mm, all right. Cool. Let me see. So let's reduce the amount of uh, variables in the equation. Begin a line uh, yeah not end if let's put it in here uh -huh, y y2 mm -hmm. and because of that we can now express the entire system of equations like this uh, i wonder if i can put that in the same place right so this is going to be a new line and this is going to be uh, cases, of course. I'm going to close the cases. Uh, so I'm thinking how I'm going to align them. How? What's the best way to align those cases? Probably by this thing. Uh -huh. mm. Okay, so this is going to be that, 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 and the last one is that. Yeah, what didn't you like? And a line. Case. Uh, case and... Oh, it's because it's cases. Uh, how can I continue? Oh, yeah. In the compilation mode, it's impossible to continue from here. So you have to restart it. Because Emacs. Welcome to Emacs. Uh, so what else? H feel it didn't like something. I don't quite remember. Oh, yeah. It wanted to have something like this. Okay, one more time, and there we go. Look at that. It looks horrible. My God. Uh, and the reason why it looks horrible is because we probably need to align them like so. So it doesn't look that much horrible anymore. 
Does it look better? I think it looks a little bit better, but we also have asterisks. So let's get rid of those. Uh, right. Query replace. Nothing. Uh, do we have anything else? Look at that. That looks much better. Mm -mm. So no need for asterisk. Well, I mean, I'm just translating whatever stuff I had in here, right? So when it hit asterisks. All right. So um, now we can express the expression, express the uh, system of equations in... Mm, now we can turn the system of equations into matrix form. Right, so let's turn it into matrix form. Uh, later, matrix mm, in equations, matrices. Okay, matrix equation. Mm, 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 mm. B matrix. Okay, think like a matrix. B a matrix. Okay. Got it. Mm -hmm. All right, so let me let me actually go ahead in here. So the first matrix that we're going to put in here is going to be T. And if I remember correctly, you can just do it like that. So it's going to begin B matrix. So I think I'm going to even put it like this. So these are the elements of the matrix. I'm going to close it like so. So we don't need commas. And just put this stuff in here. Maybe, maybe we don't even need parentheses, but I want to keep parentheses because I like them. So I think, do I have to separate the, uh, the elements? Uh, I think I do have to separate the elements. So we have to put it like that. Uh, hmm. All right, look at that. Look at that beautiful, beautiful matrix. My God, it's amazing. Mom, am I a mathematician already? I'm a mathematician, mom. Mom, I'm doing math. Not math. Math, <laughs> sorry. Okay, so, uh, hello, Fast Magic 47. Hello, hello. So, uh, very centric coordinates. So the second matrix is going to be probably U, right? So a big U, uh, begin B matrix, and we're going to close it. There we go. U1, uh, U2. There we go. This is the second matrix. But as you can see, it's not aligned properly. Let's align by equals. Right, let's align by equals. Is it gonna look nice? It looks nice, would you look at that? Oh, I can even make it a little bit closer. Okay, so this is the maximum zoom. I cannot go any further. Right, so this is as close as I can get. And the last thing we have in here is the last matrix. B matrix, uh-huh. And that one is just this. Mm-hmm. Underscore, underscore. Oh, I forgot a new line. Cool. So we have three matrices, right? And their relationship is essentially something like T. Here I probably can put C dot. Uh, multiplied by u equal to r, right? So that's basically the the form I was talking about. So since we are actually aligning by equal, I think it's gonna look kind of weird if we align by equal. Yeah, so it's kinda, it kind of looks weird. So maybe we can align by the beginning of the line, right? So again, I'm not familiar with the the convention in math. I think it looks a little bit better, right? So, yeah. so three matrices, stuff like that. Okay, that's cool. Turt. <laughs> so you can you, you need to multiply R by D, right? So you need to multiply it by D, and there you go. You've got turt. <laughs> uh, no.
Nice one. We're doing math. Oh yeah, we can we can say that d is equal to one. Yeah. D is equal to one third. <clears throat> okay. Uh, what else? So, um, so the solution. So the solution is uh, a line. Basically, oh, and in here I can actually express inverted matrix as t minus one. Okay, so yeah, it's it's kind of difficult to express it like that with like a just plain text file. You can do it like t like this, but this is very long, right? It's longer than just actually it's the same length if you think about that. They literally have the same length. So maybe it's not that bad. Right, but I mean, if you render that into the PDF file, you're gonna end up with a beautiful, beautiful T minus one. That's pretty cool. Mustafa Kuarish, I hope I pronounced you correctly. Thank you so much for two months of tier one subscription. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. So uh, we can say that the final solution is that uh, C dot R, right? So let's put it in here and let's go here. So that's the solution, right? And the only thing we need to find, uh, okay, so the solution is that is T minus one. So what T minus one is gonna be equal to? Well, it's equal to that. <clears throat> so, so the main activity so the main effort uh, goes towards towards finding uh, this thing underscore minus one right so I can have in line math with like this thing uh, right and there we go so let's go ahead and just do the align might as well copy paste this entire thing uh, doing later brings back so many memories actually Mm. Uh, the objective is to solve for the vector y, so perhaps y is similar to... Well, the thing is, we already solved this equation in a text file. So the solution looks like this, right? So that's the final solution. So I already did that in a, in a plain text file. I just decided to convert it to later. And it actually works. If it didn't work, I wouldn't be able to do this, right? So that's the actual visual confirmation that I solved that equation correctly. Otherwise, I just won't be able to do this rainbowish thing. So I'm actually quite confident that this is correct. Uh, anyway. Mm. Don't forget to add D variable to the code, but yeah, of course. I mean, yeah. I mean, in the code base, it doesn't really visible as a third. All right, so. So, anyway, mm -mm. Yeah, so the main effort goes towards finding that, and uh, where is the thing? So the inverted matrix is going to look like uh, this, and I'm not even sure if you can just do it like that. Uh, let me see. I guess you can, but yeah, I guess it's fine. So maybe I remember that there was like a like a command for the determinant. Uh, yeah, but there is no command for this one. Yeah. Anyway, so I'll just like keep using it like that. It doesn't really matter. Mm. Oh, there is. An, oh, yeah, yeah. By the way, I, I forgot that you can use a fraction. Sure, sure. So mathematicians want everything to be two dimensional. They are scared of one dimension. Yeah, there we go. So that looks a little bit nicer. Uh, that looks a tiny bit nicer. Nice, nice, nice. Okay. So uh, next thing. Determinant is going to look like this. Uh, and we don't need that for sure. I wish there was an easy way to do that but maybe we can do something like this yeah boy boy that's a long ass thing okay 
So let me maybe align all of that stuff like that. Oh, that looks a little bit better. Ah, can't see shit in this mist. How can I... I probably have to add a terminal. Yeah, okay, let's actually add the terminal here so we can see some stuff. Okay, so this is the determinant. And uh, then we need to define a joint matrix. So this is going to be like this. Uh, begin B matrix. Mm -hmm. uh, and let's close this. Like so. Uh, something was not complete. Ah, uh, this is because it didn't provide the new line in here. Uh huh. Uh, paragraph sixty-seven. I can't see. Mm hmm. You see any problems? Probably because of the new line in there. That's what it feels like. So if I remove the new line. I'm missing something missing where I am blind. Am I blind? I think I am in fact blind. I don't see the problem. Oh, okay. Here it is. Okay, that's fine. Uh -huh. Okay, cool. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? I think it's freaking beautiful. Might as well get rid of this thing. Well, of course, I have to like put underscores in here. There we go. A boom. That is looks pretty cool. Uh, look at that. So we have a joined a joined matrix, and of course the uh, inverted matrix that is has to look like this. Uh huh. So it's a T minus one. Oh, and this one is going to be rather interesting. So do we want to use fractions in here? Okay, so let me try to first wrap it into the B matrix environment. It's like a B movie, but B matrix. You know what I mean? Haha, <laughs> very funny. Oh. Okay, so this is going to be a new line. And here I'm going to use the multiple cursors. Right, what if we try to use literally fractions in here? Uh, that was a pretty bad idea, but anyway. So this is the frac, like so. Uh-huh. Is it gonna look good? Let's find out. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we moved to the next line. Uh, and if I go to put next line in here, I mean next page. That looks like shit. I like it. Interesting really don't like how it looks like. So you know what I'm going to do? I think I'm going to move the determinant like outside of this entire thing. So I'm going to just keep it like so. Uh, though probably makes sense to get rid of that. And of course, I forgot to put underscores in here. Sure. So maybe I can do... Can I do it like this fraction? Like this and divided by determinant t. Can I do it like that? I can. Look, look how... Okay. <laughs> Does it look good? Does it look good? So... Uh, maybe we can even, you know, do it like that. And then C dot to indicate that we're multiplying or something. Yeah, that looks even better. What do you think? Damn, I feel like a professional mathematician. Holy shit. That's so cool. Anyway. Uh, so, let me see. And now we need to find the multiplication of t minus 1 c dot r. Right, so that's what we're trying to find in here. Uh-huh. So that's the... Where, where is that? So it has to be on the, on the next line. There we go. So we need to find this thing. Uh, use d instead of what? Sure, I forgot about the D. Thank you, thank you so much. Yeah, so <laughs> the only purpose of that D is to just read this as a third. Like there is no other reason to have this D. <laughs> okay. Well, it's always nice to have a D. Uh, right. So I'm just saying. Okay. And now, might as well just 
maybe keep this entire stuff like so and begin the matrix and like there we go and hmm so it means I don't really need to have a determinant uh, determinant so I can just do it like that right so this is a new line yo okay mm-hmm And I suppose the last thing I want to do, right, the last thing I want to do, I want to actually sort of like specify the final formula. Um, um, so the final formula, you need to find uh, u1, u2, u3, uh, given uh, points. Mm, can I do it like that? V1, V2, V3, P uh, is, and let's just specify that formula. So um, begin a line, and so U1 is going to be equal to where's the very center coordinates? Mm -hmm. Hmm. I think it would be easier for me to copy paste that stuff in here, right? And use a fraction actually. I I, th I want it to look really really good, so I'm gonna use a fraction. And at the bottom of the fraction, we're gonna use the determinant, uh, the matrix determinant, like so. So it's gonna look very very epic. Trust me. Uh, okay, look at that. Doesn't that look cool? Frunjik, thank you so much for tier one. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So this is only y1, right? So we need to define uh, y2, u2, sorry. Right, so this is gonna be fraction. Uh, the denominator, already known, we can put it in here. Uh, the u2, uh, it's gonna go in here. Right, and this is a new line. Okay, this is the second, uh, you know, value. And the last one, uh, u3, is 1 minus u2 minus u1. Uh, and we can also align this entire thing. There we go. So that's basically the final formula that you need, right? So u1 can be fine like this, u2 can be fine like this, and u3 is basically expressed in terms of u1 and u2. So, and we have a white paper, and we can basically just go ahead and pub publish this white paper to some scientific journal. But not really scientific, maybe some math journal or something like that. Um, thank you for this brilliant show, Latex, Math and Humor. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Um, I'm really glad that was entertaining. It was really entertaining for me. I feel like I should have actually done all of the math reasoning in LaTeX right away because, I mean, it's basically the, the best of both worlds. You have a text that you can just like shape around and modify and you also have like a conventional math representation, right? So, yeah, I guess. So maybe I should have done it like that. Um, and furthermore, you can now start, start making it you know, interesting, like pretty, like put a section. Um, Barycentric coordinates. Uh, right. So let's actually try to do the following thing. Uh, right. And there we go. So we have a section in here. You know what, we, what would be cool in here? Uh, the picture that illustrates the, like how the triangle looks like with v1, v2, uh, v3, and the, the p. 
No mechanical action. I remember there was a package in LaTeX that would allow you to do like a vector graphics. Like LaTeX, um, something like Feats. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know what I expected. Uh, something like like a simple word, but with Z instead of S. Does anyone? Ticks, yes. Thank you so much. <laughs> anyway, math, math is hard, okay? Math is hard. Uh, so, ticks. Yeah, there we go. Uh, let me see. Okay, that, that was awkward. Yeah, yeah, so this is basically... I'm pretty sure I have it installed. Uh, again, I've been doing like later for quite some time. Uh, and this is also, also an old machine. So I probably have a lot of like different later packages installed in here. So I'm sure I have... Why do I want to say feed sticks? Okay. Uh, let me try to do... Okay, so it compiles. Um, so what's the environment we're supposed to use in here? Uh, ticks picture. All right. Mm -hmm. And let's close this thing. So we're supposed. Okay. So here we actually put like two lines. Right. And this is intersection. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can I just like recompile this into I think? Oh, okay. That's that's pretty cool. Look at that. So you you can straight up have the. Um, you can straight up have vector graphics in here, which is kind of cool, I think. I'm going to keep it in here. Uh, so, it would be also kind of nice to have some sort of variables, but I'm not sure how to do that uh, yet. So, let me just try to print, to, just to draw something. Uh, okay, so fill draw black circle at two points. Okay, so this is probably what I want. Uh, I'm, I want to have a... Uh, point maybe at zero zero uh, So this one is probably the label, right? So can I put? Uh, something like v1 in here, right? Just to see how it's gonna go uh, This didn't work. I wonder why probably because the semicolon so it wants a semicolon So let's put it in here and okay. So here is the v1 um, next one I want to have is probably something like V2. Mm -hmm. All right. It's a 1, 2, which is probably fine, sure. So th this is a Y2, and let's have Y3, uh, which is gonna go in terms of like X even further, but I would like it to go like to negative, right? Okay, this is exactly what I wanted, believe it or not. Uh, I wonder if I can center this entire thing. Um, I remember there was an environment literally called center. Can I just like wrap this entire thing into this environment? Uh, oh, okay, so it's centered. Okay, how do I draw the um, the lines? I suppose to do it like that. And this is where I would like to have some variables, if you know what I mean. That would be nice because I want to be able to modify these things. Right, and if I modify these things, I also modify the lines that are connecting all of that stuff. If you know what I mean. Mm, all right, so let me see if it put works. Okay, right, so I think I want to draw the lines behind uh, somewhere here. Right, so okay, so they're not visible. If I remember correctly, you should be able to just like define and you can like literally define some sort of a macros, right? So let's say maybe uh, x1 and x1 is going to be 0 and let's define x2 uh, which is going to be 0, right? Uh, it doesn't really color everything properly because it wants to be on a single line, but I'm pretty sure it doesn't have to be on a single line. x2 and it doesn't like the numbers in here, but whatever, x1 X2. Okay. Uh, well, I mean, it has to be Y1. I'm sorry. I'm a dummy dum dum. Okay. Uh, all right. So it works, which means that I can modify X1 
and it actually modifies both the node and the line. That's actually pretty cool. So I can actually have a variable, so I can modify them simultaneously. That's actually perfect. That's actually really cool. So I have a turtle graphics, right? So I have a turtle graphics. Oh, so Tix has something built in. I don't know, like, does it su support like variables for uh, for separate components? Because I want to have a control over like uh, separate components as well. Uh, this is the level of control I would like to have because this looks like you can only like specify coordinates for pairs, but can I specify for a single component? I, I don't know. This works, so I'm gonna fo follow this thing. <laughs> Sorry. Can I put it on the, like the same line? I think I think I should be able to. If I remember, yeah, I can. Oh, it's Emacs that doesn't understand. Is there like a better mode for LaTeX? I heard something like the AOC Tech or something. Is it better than the built-in LaTeX thingy? Uh, right, because this one, it's incapable of even like parsing like things on the same line, even though it supports them, you know what I mean? It's just like, uh, I don't know. So maybe maybe we should install uh, this package packages. Ayuk Ayuk Tech Ayuk Tech. How do you even pronounce that? I don't even know. Ayuk Tech. Uh, is it is it installed already? Uh, okay, it's not installed. Okay, let's actually install it. Contacting host, extracting, checking, a trick, a trick, a checking. It's actual package manager. Would you look at that? Hmm? It's a built in package manager. Can you even do that? I think Vim has a package manager as well. But the one where you can open the list of packages and install. Can you even do that actually? I don't know. Operation finished. Okay, so is it going to be supported automatically? Oh, shit. Oh, this looks actually pretty cool. Yo. Yo. And it doesn't highlight this thing. <laughs> I spent some time installing like a different later support and this thing not only doesn't support these two things on the same line, it doesn't even highlight them at all. Whatever, I don't care. <laughs> Let's continue. Uh, so, okay. Um, X to Y to. Uh, okay, X to Y to. Right, let's try to compile this entire thing, and it doesn't even work. It doesn't even work. I think it has to be like 1, 2, or something. Uh, all right, so what's up with that? What's up with that? Is that because it's a... Uh, uh, doesn't match this definition. Ooh, is that because this thing does not support the numbers or something? Wait, what? Uh, so, 12. Ugh, how am I supposed? Really? What a shitty tokenizer. Okay. Um. X A. Let's call it X A. <laughs> and this is Y A. So X B Y B. X, C, Y, C. And then we're going to... <laughs> X, P, Y, P. What the fuck? <laughs> ah. Okay, 1, 2. Then we have 2 minus 1. And P will decide what's going to be the P. Uh, Alright, Y, A. X, B, Y, B. Uh, so this is the first line. Then we're going to have Y, B. C and then C goes back to A like so. Then we just render A uh, B 
see. And let me see. Ha ha! Yo! Yo! Look at that. So that means in the third one, I can just move this thing like so. And it just automatically works. It just works. It just freaking... Would you look at that? By the way, furthermore, can I have math inside of these labels? Can I have? I can't. Or can I? I don't freaking know why it didn't work. So 15 something something what? Uh, no unknown operator. So it wants to be what? Why? I, I can't have that really. This sucks. No, it doesn't suck. So I, I made a oopsie doopsie. Am I blind? Chat, chat, chat. Am I blind? Where did I make a mistake? I, I don't see it. Because it worked. Oh, yeah, okay. Accidentally pressed G. Accidentally pressed G. Okay, so let's actually try to do that one more time. Uh, there we go. Yo! I can have math in labels. Holy shit. My god. Can your Vim do that? It's not even about Vim, <laughs> right? It's about later. <laughs> it has nothing to do with Vim, but I don't care. Look at that. So I wonder where I can put P. Right. So we're going to have a P in here. Right. And this is just P. Uh, but let me see. Okay. P is the same as here, but can I just like... In terms of X, it could be on the same level as here, so it could be, I mean, it's Y, so it's zero. And in terms of X, we can just move it one to the right. Right. So, okay. Uh, and maybe we could bring it up just slightly. That looks good. That looks good. So, and now I want to connect each individual thing with some dotted line, if you know what I mean, right? Um, okay, so how are we gonna be connecting all of that? So we're gonna con be connecting all of that stuff with P. Uh huh. There. Right. There we go. All of that is connected, but I want it to be like sort of dotted. Um, I wonder if I can keep it thick, thick, but then say dotted. Does it support this kind? Okay. Oh, that's actually pretty cool. Would you look at that? Would you look at that? That's so cool. Oh shit. It's just like SVG, but inside of later. Uh, that's pretty nice. <laughs> and you know what's cool is that like I, I can modify this stuff. Okay, so what if I make 25 in here? Right, and just like, yeah, it, it just updates. I can just like move it around. I can even use, I didn't even have to use the my paint. I could have just used this for explanation. Like, who the fuck needs any of that? Like, later, for everything. Yes, perfect. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> that's so cool. I like that. Oh shit, I'm also streaming for two hours. I guess that's gonna be it for today as well. Uh, you know what? I think I'm going to commit that along with with everything. I'm going to put docs and in the docs I'm going to move this thing in here. Right. Uh, yep. So... Uh, I remember there was a way to sort of like have a title and author... Uh, maybe I'm going to do that later. Whatever. Um, so... Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Implement uh, triangle interpolation uh, based on very centric coordinates. It fits. It fits. Perfect. Okay. So I pushed it um, right into the repo. So the tag file should be available in docs if you want to use it, if you want to play with it. Uh, maybe in the future I'm gonna actually put a little bit more stuff in here with explanation. This is so... I should have used it more. Uh, yeah. I should use it more. 
All right, so we've been streaming for two hours. Does anyone have any questions before I go? Today was actually a pretty cool stream, I really like that. Does anyone have any questions regarding what we've done today? All right, we've done actually pretty cool shit today. Uh, PDF later, very centric coordinates. Okay, so new PDF. Yeah, that's so cool. What's the next step? Uh, the next step is going to be actually using the triangle interpolation for uh, Z buffering, right? So as I already said, we're trying to move to like actual 3D and in 3D to properly cut the triangles that intersect with each other, you need to have Z buffering, right? And Z buffering is usually done by interpolating the Z uh, coordinates of the vertices of the triangle. But there is a challenge, a little bit of a challenge of the fact that the triangles are actually projected onto the screen. So their Z coordinates are not um, changing linearly, right? So, and there is a hack for that. You're actually interpolating like inverted value of Z, but I'll go into that on the next stream when we're going to do like actual Z buffering. But without the triangle interpolation, you can't really do that, right? Because you need to linearly interpolate the triangle. Um, mm -mm. <laughs> like how we turned from C stream into writing scientific paper. Yeah, that's actually pretty cool. Um, I didn't expect that. So later is fun. Later is fun. And what's cool about later is that there is a lot of, uh, you know, stuff about it on the internet. Like whatever problem you have, you can always put it into, the, into Google. And somebody already found a solution that you can just copy paste and it will work. So because so many people just work with this daily, right? So we just like, yeah. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Right. Uh -uh. You misspelled variables. Okay, let me see. Uh, yeah, thank you so much. Let me mm -hmm. typo. There we go. So maybe I want to also git ignore uh, this stuff. Uh, Oaks log and uh, PDF. There we go. Mm, will you actually use later instead of paint for explanation? I'll think about that. Like, I need to read more about ticks and its capabilities. And uh, that's actually actually a lot of cool capabilities. Okay, I, I'll practice off screen. Uh, and then maybe I'm going to use it instead of like my paint because it's a little bit easier to use. Right. And then what's cool is that along with the drawings, you can also have formulas, like mathematical formulas. So you, you don't have to do that with, like, with hands. So it's actually really convenient. Um, git ignore later garbage. I'm going to push that right into the repo. Tix is awesome. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I also really like uh, PGF plots. It's like GNU plot and later. I could never learn GNU plot. Like, it's kind of weird. Uh, to put the title, you can use title commands. Oh, thank you. I, I'll Google that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. Um, mm, mm, you can also put it in the repo. You think sh I should put PDF into the repo so can people can use it? Uh, maybe. Maybe it makes sense. Okay. Sure. Un git ignore the PDF file. And I'm gonna just put it in here. Uh -huh. And as far as I know, GitHub can render PDF files. Yeah, there you go. It's trying. A at least it is trying. Okay, that's cool. If, if you want to read, the, I can share this PDF document with everyone, right? <laughs> because you don't even have to download it because GitHub can render it for you. Uh, right, so that's pretty cool. Uh, that's nice. Future. The future is here, old man. All right. 
So maybe I'm gonna also put that in the description for anyone who's watching. Uh, for anyone who's watching on the YouTube. All right, so that's it for today. Thanks everyone who's watching me right now. Really appreciate it. Have a good one, and I see you on the next recreation program. Love you. Mwah.